fascinating, fascinating case in New Jersey uh, gets into the courtroom today. And uh, jury selection began today in in New Brunswick, uh, the courtroom of Glenn Berman. He used to be a prosecutor out there in Middlesex County, involving the case of an RU student uh, charged with webcasting his roommate's sexual activity with a male partner. And then uh, Tyler Clemente ended up committing suicide uh, after the event was webcast. We're not sure about the connection. That's going to be part of the defense posture here. Uh, we're talking about Darun Ravi of Plainsboro, charged with spying on Clemente. Uh, on September the 19th of 2010 and then tried to do the same thing again on the 21st. In that incident, he allegedly sent an invitation for others to watch after Clemente asked for use of the room. Clemente got wind of the attempt uh, the second time around and unplugged the connection. And uh, we're going to go from there. And then I want to talk a little bit about Molly Wee, uh, who was the girlfriend of uh, of Ravi, who supposedly watched this uh, webcast uh, on the Internet and then was given over to a PTI program. And uh, charges will be dropped if she successfully completes the program. I have a problem with that as well. But I want to go to the expert on this, Attorney Edward Weinstein from the law office of Edward Weinstein in central New Jersey. And, Edward, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're taking the time tonight to try to explain all of this to us. Good evening, Gary. How are you today? Uh, I am good, Ed. I'm good, Ed. And this case basically, as explained, uh, involves charges of invasion of privacy, attempted invasion of privacy, bias intimidation. And what does the prosecution here have to do to get a conviction? And what are the major obstacles in this case? Okay, well, first and foremost, what I deem to be essential for the public to embrace is that there's actually what I call two trials occurring here. Yeah. There's the trial of public opinion, where I believe many people have already drawn conclusions. Right. And then there's the criminal trial, which is occurring at the Superior Court of New Jersey and being presided over by the Honorable Judge Glenn Berman, who, as you mentioned, is a former prosecutor himself. Right. Now, on... With respect to the trial of public opinion, it's my belief that with the dramatic growth and progress that the gay rights movement has embraced and experienced over the past few years, combined with the issue of bullying, which has now taken on a national level to the point that President Obama himself not only has discussed the bullying issue, President Obama has opined on this specific case in question. So I find that to be two driving issues that almost force the prosecution's hand with respect to moving forward with the case. And back in December, a very generous plea bargain was made to the defendant in this matter, Mr. Ravi, and it was declined. The prosecutor, to offer such a, let's call it, softball plea bargain, they know they have a very difficult case to prove. Now, again, this is in a court of law. And the one of the reasons, or maybe the primary reason, that the defendant turned down, and it was basically 600 hours of community service, right. probation, yep. counseling. Right. It's, 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 no, no jail time. No, nothing even close right. to it. And let me ask, uh, you know, I was uh, I was asking just a couple of seconds ago, Edward, uh, about what some of the major obstacles are here for the prosecutor, Julia McClure, in Middlesex County. Uh, do you think they're going to have a tough time proving this because they're saying he never really said anything negatively about gays and homosexuality and there was no homophobia involved in this? And then you have other people saying that this was a heterosexual couple. Edward Weinstein, if you're the prosecutor in this case McClure how do you how do you bring bias into this case and convince the jury well certainly my job as the prosecutors to portray the defendant Mr. Ravi as a malicious homophobe yeah one of the problems is that after the incident Mr. Clemente before he tragically took his life right he posted on a, basically it's an online community for homosexuals, and he basically, he had a mixed reaction to the incident. He, he stated, I can quote it for you, I feel like the only thing the school might do is find me another roommate. 
And, I mean, aside from being, I'll, I'll leave the blank, yeah. time to time, right. he's a pretty decent roommate, end quote. So, but what, what when he comes out with a comment like that where he says, I think what the, the only thing the school will do is just find me another roommate, what, but what is, behi- what is the psychology behind that? Is he saying that, damn, I mean, that's all they're going to do here, this is it? Or is he saying, okay, I'm going to get past this, and uh, and this is what happened, I'll get me another roommate, and this won't happen again? What, what's your view on that? This young man was posting to an extremely sympathetic organization. Yeah. It's just as boys.com is the website. Right. Okay. So if there was ever a forum where this young man was going to let all his feelings out that this guy is a homophobe, that he's a biased person, he's a malicious person. Yeah. This was the place to say it. Not 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 necessarily say on on a, on a more public forum, say like to say something like Facebook or Twitter, where you're you're opening yourself up to. Unfortunately, there are these ignorant people out there who have a problem with somebody like uh, Mr. Clementi, his brother, and obviously other gay people, homosexuals. Uh, we we are talking to Edward Weinstein of the Edward Weinstein Law Firm uh, in Central New Jersey about this uh, high-profile uh, case involving uh, webcasting of a homosexual relationship um, in a room and then putting it out there on the Internet. And then one of the people involved in that ended up committing suicide, uh, taking a leap from the George Washington Bridge. After this happened, uh, we heard for several weeks about, about the mental stability of Tyler Clemente and whether or not this incident actually was just the final straw in the proverbial camel's back. How much of a role is that going to play in the jurors' minds as they are deliberating uh, this case, Edward? I, pl- I, I believe it plays a heavy role. Yeah. One of the, uh, count, uh, numerous reasons that the defense attorney, Stephen Altman, has hired a jury selection expert because of that a precise issue. And again, because we all walk in when something has blown up into such a national, international proportions, it's inevitable that jurors may walk in with preconceived conclusions with respect to what Mr. Ravi did and the end results here. And again, it's very important. And when I was initially interviewed last week by a local journalist, Cheryl Macon, of the Home News Tribune, and then uh, the USA Today picked up the story, I've received a lot of feedback from on my own blog and my own, uh, say, Facebook and so forth. People feel what Mr. Ravi did caused death of this young man all right let me let me just because we're running on the clock here uh let me let me ask uh molly we or why who uh originally told investigators about the incident allegedly viewed uh, clementi uh from uh, 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 ravi allegedly viewed clementi from her room she was also charged with invasion of privacy uh she was placed in a probationary program known as uh, PTI the pretrial intervention all charges will be dropped if she successfully completes the program was this a plea deal with her do you think that this uh, uh given uh this case do you think that was appropriate but it, you know it, for my money and strictly from a lay perspective uh, I believe, and I don't know the intricate details uh, of of the case, but for my money, she uh, held a little more responsibility than what seems to be uh, put. You know, she knew of it. She she's culpable, as far as I'm concerned. And whether you know w- whether or not there's the connect or the disconnect with the eventual suicide of Clementi, for me, this is just wow. She really she really uh, sidestepped the big one here, as far as I'm concerned. Well, if I may, Gary. Yeah. A couple, a few comments. Number one, times have changed. Back uh, when I went to college, you showed up and there was a fellow standing there and you introduced yourself, and that's when you found out who your roommate is. Now you find out who your roommate is, you Google that person, right. and you can find out a lot about him. So number one, Mr. Ravi had already, and there was a ton of correspondence between he and his friends via Twitter, where he said, oh, this guy plays the violin, I don't think he's my kind of guy, Mr. Ravi drives a BMW. Mr. Clemente did not own a car. 
Mr. Clemente came from an extremely conservative family. There's a long history, even before they become roommates between the two of them, which leads to the next extremely important factor, is that Mr. Ravi was, in fact, this fella's roommate, which then you can add in more charges. All right, let me, let me because uh, we're up against the clock here, I uh, just want to go to sentencing guidelines the way I have them here. The top count of second-degree bias intimidation, uh, the way I'm reading it, carries up to 10 years in prison if convicted uh, for a conviction of hindering, depending on the degree of the crime. He faces anything from probation to 10 years in prison. If convicted of the remaining invasion of privacy and tampering charges, probation is likely. You know, the big the big question mark here is the the possible connection between the suicide, uh, the uh, the crime itself, which was kind of heinous. Not kind of, it is heinous when you when you you video this stuff and you web it. And more often than not, you have judges who say, "Okay, I'm gonna uh, this sentence is coming down because I need to send a message." I'm just very 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 worried here in this case that. Justice, at least through the eyes of Gary Arnell, uh, one man's opinion, is not really going to be served when it comes to Tyler Clemente. What do you think? Even if, which I predict, that there's going to be a, a not guilty uh, with respect to the large indictment, yeah. bias, intimidation, the invasion of privacy, right. Mr. Ravi might get hit with something smaller, tampering with evidence, something smaller. Yeah. But... The good news that comes out of this is the national and international attention. Well, it's like the Whitney Houston case. The good news that came out of that is now everybody's discussing opiates and Percocet and Endocet and the medicine cabinet, uh, you know, uh, drugs. All right, uh, Edward Weinstein, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it.